Uh, there you are. Mercifully, our time in Greece is coming to an end, so we're updating our CV, ready to apply for our next job. Let's just run through how we've performed. We had a fabulous start at Duga Polia. We overachieved at Peronia. We just messed around in Benin. We did great things with Gornik. Let's not mention Ostrovine. We won the double at Cluj. Oh, Cluj. And at Pauk, well, today it's Judgment Day lose, and we've had probably our worst spell at a club yet win, and we could yet be heroes. So we have a lot to talk you through. We've actually played on quite a bit since our last episode. We're at the quarterfinal stage of the Europa Conference League. We're at the second leg against RZ Alkmaar. We are trailing 2-1 from the first leg, but we do have a sniff of a chance of making progress to a Europa Conference League semi-final, which I think would be a pretty rich return for our time at Pauk, which is on the cusp of being branded a major disappointment. Let's show you the form since the last episode. Plenty of games played. Let's go through European action first of all, because we were drawn in the second knockout phase of the Conference League against a team from Ukraine called Zaria. We went out to Ukraine in the first leg. We beat them 3-2. They needed a penalty in the last minute just to get it to that score. We should have run up a cricket score against them. That's how good we were in this game. In fact, I was so confident that we would beat them at home in the second leg and make progress that I resisted the temptation to come back and record that episode. I thought I'd rather bring you back for the quarterfinals and gamble on making it there. I was right to take that gamble because we won 2-0 at home in the second leg, a 5-2 progression on aggregate, and we really should have scored more in the second leg than just the two. That's pretty much the high point because things have gone badly wrong in the league and we've also lost that first leg against RZ Alkmaar 2-1 and that should have been another cricket score as well except against us this time. Miguel Almiron scored in the 80th minute to give us the slightest snifter of a chance of progressing but honestly RZ Alkmaar could have scored four maybe even five goals in this game so we are incredibly fortunate to still be in the tie. Are we still in the hunt for second place in the league? Probably not, to be honest. In the league, things have gone badly since the last episode. They were okay up until the league split. We beat Crete 4-3. That was a little bit of a sneaky win. We beat Lamia 3-0. But then once we got to some of the tougher games, we were in a little bit more trouble. We lost to Ike Athens 1-0. We drew 0-0 with Panatolikos. That was a disappointing result. We won 3-0 in the next game, 1-0 in the game after that, although our goal did come very late on and has started a little run of games where we've really struggled to find the back of the net again. Once the league split, our first game was against Panathinaikos. By this time, we were back in European action and we were rotating the squad very heavily, gambling on us making progress in Europe and still just trying to cling on to finishing second in the league. While the progress in Europe has been made, the chances of coming second in the league have gone because we lost to Panathinaikos. We lost the Derby 3-0 to Aris. The fans were not happy about that. Neither are they happy that Aris are now above us in second place in the league and they've got a Greek Cup final to look forward to as well. The press were on our back after we'd lost to Olympiakos. We then went out to the Netherlands and lost to RZ before our most recent game where we played Ike Athens and we got taught a footballing lesson once more. I must say, in the games we've played since the league split, we have been rotating very heavily. We've been saving our first 11 for European action and playing a mixture of youngsters and bench warmers in the league. And it's blown up in my face because if we show you the league table, you'll see that second place is looking very unlikely now. We are six points behind Aris, who have charged out in front of us. We're level on points with Panathinaikos, so we might only come fourth in the league this season. But if we go out tonight, we can reverse our strategy. We can put our strongest players back into the league. But I would rather us make progress in Europe. If we could reach a Conference League semi-final, if we even had the chance of making a final, well, what a performance that would be. But if we lose tonight and only finish fourth in the league, then we're probably going to chalk this up as an incredibly disappointing time in Thessaloniki. The good news is, is that we've got close to our first 11 available for tonight's game, but only close, I'm afraid, because our most important player, Felipe Suarez, is injured again. No sooner had we got him back in the team and he'd started looking influential than he broke his leg in a training session and he's now been out for almost five months of this season in total. 
And it's really hurt us because he's our most creative player. He's one of our top performers and he chips in with the occasional goal, but only 13 league appearances and we've only got a few games left of the season. We have really struggled to create without him. Melida is now back and has stayed fit. He's been in reasonable form, although we've not been playing him as often as we could have. We've been trying to keep him fresh for these big games, but he has been hitting the back of the net with pretty regular occurrence. So hopefully he might be a bit of a thorn in the side of RZ Alkmaar this evening. RZ looks so good in the first leg that this could be done and dusted if they score early, but we're going to try and go for it without leaving ourselves too exposed. We're going to stay on a positive mentality. I'm going to nudge one of the wingbacks up to attack because we need a little bit of impetus. Rather than be a playmaker, I'm going to ask Al Moron to be a shadow striker. That's the role I changed him to in the first leg when he managed to get that goal for us. And we're going to need a little bit of something from Tafik Ishmael tonight because we have been struggling to find a second player who can really score any goals for us alongside Melida. We'll need strong performances from Ryabchuk and Sissoko in midfield as well. If he could dash up from midfield and get on the end of a cross, you never know. We might have a chance of a European semi-final. The chances are slim, but I guess there's only one way to find out if we're going to make progress or not. While we go and do the pre-match warm-up, let's show you the scout report. Having made the trip to the Netherlands last week and to the city of Alkmaar, today we welcome RZ to Greece. RZ are currently fourth in their domestic league, the same position they finished in last season's Eredivisie. And having made the quarterfinals of the Conference League and being 2-1 up from the first leg, head coach Alfred Schroeder will be confident of making the semi-finals as Pauk have home advantage when they're taking on RZ Alkmaar. Okay, we've had a rare good pre-match team talk, but did you see that form on the screen there? We've lost four of our last five games. Confidence is not exactly going to be high. And look out for this striker. They've got Magnussen. He tore us apart in the first leg. We're hoping we'll have a quieter evening tonight. The first highlight looks like it's going to go to the opposition. They've slung in a free kick. We've headed it away, but there's only five minutes gone. And RZ are looking to stamp their authority on this game already. An early goal for them. And it could be all over. We need two goals to try and make progress. One to force extra time. But we've got to keep a clean sheet as well. And there is Magnussen, the player we feared. And very early on, Keita Balde has scored for them. We're looking for an offside flag. It's not forthcoming and we have blown it, haven't we? We are going to get absolutely tonked tonight. Blown out of the water. Oh, we hoped that it would be a glorious night at the Tumba where we made progress to a European semi-final. But our frailties at the back show that we are not cut out for this level and we've got it all to do. It's another free kick for our opponents now. We look vulnerable from these. We've relied on our keeper to just shovel it wide. And now Bakuna is on the floor trying to block efforts. We look ever so nervous every time the ball comes into our box and we look toothless when we're sending the ball into the opposition's box. That's not a good combination. We can neither keep clean sheets nor score prolifically. And it is starting to look like a desperate, desperate evening. Latika tips another effort wide to the other side this time. This could be over by half time. Okay, we've thrown out a demand more shout and we've immediately got a highlight. It could be one for us. Ryabchuk again has looked pretty likely down that left, but his cross is clattered out for a corner. Maybe a set piece might be our best chance of a goal given how much we've struggled in the early part of this game. Almiron sends his corner in. He can't even beat the first man. Fortunately, we've still got the ball. Almiron's on it again. Now it's Sissoko. We've got an overlapping right back and they found him. Can he get some good delivery in the box? He can't. He's got a second opportunity though. Now he's got space for the cross. Sissoko, he's six foot four. He got up above the ball. He's headed it over the bar. This halftime whistle cannot come early enough. I think I'm going to have to design a new tactic at halftime because we are being completely outplayed. And RZ are coming forward again. Maybe they're just a better quality team than us. They look quicker. They look more dynamic. And we've been relying on Latika to make a string of important stops in this first period. But these match stats are a bit of a horror show. Seven shots, nothing on target versus nine shots, five on target. And they've hit the back of the net. I think it's time to bring out the biggest water bottles we can find. 
taken 53 minutes, but we've managed to get a highlight. And Mike Zian's got the ball out on the right for us. We don't have those men in the box that we were hoping for. But Mike Zian's got it to Ishmael, and it's not resulted in a shot on target. Instead, it's charged down. We're into the highlights once more. We've got the ball again. That's at least encouraging. And we've got it with Almiron. That is such a poor pass. We're not going to do anything with passes like that. But now we're in. And it was a chance. That was the chance. Game. At least some highlights are coming. And it looks like they're regularly coming for us now. We've got Riabchuk and Mike Zian's in again. And he's shown a clean pair of heels. And again, the keeper has bailed them out. We're at least looking more likely. But unless one of these chances goes in soon, we're going out of Europe. It's another highlight this time for our opponents. If we concede, we'll be, what, 4-1 down on aggregate. And we're packing up and going home. But we're not giving up. Pereira's won the ball. And he could release a player. This time it's Ismail. He's been brought down in the box. He's got to have been brought down in the box. This is going to be a VAR review. He had his heels clipped, didn't he? He definitely had his heels clipped. The ref's not gone to VAR. He's booked him. And can we drag ourselves back into the game from a penalty? Almiron, tuck it away, son. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Oh, I thought we were done for, but the goalie saved it and then stood still while it was at his feet. Almiron has the reflexes of a young, well, a young thing. He's about 34 years old and he's tucked that one away. We've got 29 minutes to try and find another goal. We've got just over 20 minutes left and I've come in to try and make a substitution, but I'm not sure we've got anything on the bench that is really going to strengthen us in any way. Sissoko's looking tired but we're short of quality midfielders. And we could also do with taking Mikalidis off because he's playing poorly. But Ingerson, every time we play him in a big game, he creates a major incident in our defence. So do you know what? I think I'm going to leave it a little longer and see if we can get that equalising goal before we make a change. However, that could be the nail in the coffin. It's a free kick to Alkmaar and they've curled it home. And Latika has been so good for us in this game, but he's been beaten at his near post. It's gone around the wall. It's gone miles around the wall. You've got to question whether there was the wall in the right place for that free kick. And with time running out, I don't think there's much more that we can do. Patty Wills throws a free kick over the bar. Five minutes left, two goals to find. We'll throw a shout out, probably in vain. Let's encourage them because they have at least been creating some chances. A goal here. An injury time could be interesting. Here's Paddy Bill. He's racing forward from centre half and he's fed Maizani. Can he get the ball in the box? Just give us a goal to keep it exciting. We've hit the post. Uh, Ponza's in. We're looking for a flag again. Uh, Ponza's in. It's 4-3 on aggregate and we've got time left. We could score one more goal. We could take it to extra time. Might see and dances to the byline. That probably should have gone in from Ismail, but a Ponza, well, he's only got to bundle it over the line. Goodness me, we're into injury time now. I feel like we need a shout. We can't. I've already put the shout out. Give us something. We've got two minutes. Can we be even more attacking? Sissoko, central midfielder, attack. Just get forward. We could also freshen things up a little bit, I guess. Bakuna's looking tired, maybe. Potseridis could just be the sole midfielder in there. It's counting down, though. The goal's not coming, is it? The goal's not coming. It's 2-2 on the night. We've gone out of Europe 4-3 on aggregate. I'm going to be honest with you, that one stung a little bit. It was close, but it wasn't enough. And now look at that run of form. It's starting to look pretty hideous. We've got six games to try and save our season and qualify Pauk for Europe before we move on to Pasture's new if you're looking for a new save of your own, this video might just have a club in it that might inspire your next football manager adventure. Why don't you check it out next?